What's going on guys, it's your boy Sam and today I have a super exciting video for you all. So, a lot of people have been commenting on my GH4 slow motion test footage and asking how I got the image looking like I did. You know, some people have said it doesn't really look like GH4, the dynamic range looks better than it's meant to, you know, the colours look a lot different to what they're used to and, you know, there seems to be no noise in the shadow as well and I'm going to touch on all of those things and what I did, how I shot on the day, how I cut it together and how I've color graded it. And I've actually put the color grade down below for free for you guys to use in your own projects. So let's get into it. First things first, color profile on the day. I'm sorry, I said Cine V, but looking at the footage right now, I found the project today and looking at it, it does look like Cine D. So I'm sorry for misleading anyone if I did, but it would have been Cine D looking at this and I would have turned contrast all the way down saturation all the way down, sharpening all the way down, noise reduction off, eye resolution off, eye dynamic off, just everything as flat as possible. And the key to shooting in kind of a log, if this was before vlog was out, but the key to shooting in like a log kind of format is to overexpose a little bit. So this isn't as overexposed as I'd shoot vlog, but it is overexposed. And the reason you do that is because if you expose normally, and then when you try and make add contrast back in, the blacks like it, it's super dark firstly and secondly you're gonna have noise in the blacks as well because they're shadows on the day it's a lot of shadows a lot of noise so you overexpose a little bit so there's no noise hope that makes sense and then you can add the shadows back in and post which is what I've done so this color has done a lot so what I've done is I've put this light below, it's the Fuji 40 SP double negative, and I've applied that firstly. I went through a lot of lights and found the one I liked, and this was what I liked. And from there, I've warmed it up a little bit, added a bit of magenta, and that just helps with the skin tones, and then I've crushed the blacks a lot. And that's what makes the noise go away. You just crush the noise right out of it. And because you've overexposed, you can. To bring the shadows back to what they should be, you have to crush it a lot. If I just make it zero, you can see it's super bright and that's not what you want. You can still see the noise in her shirt and in the pillow. So if you crush the blacks like I did, which is negative 51, it gets rid of it and it adds shadow and contrast and depth to the image. Um, and then I've just brought the saturation back to what it should be because I was shooting super flat. And then from there, to bring up kind of the shadows a little bit because I didn't want super contrasted, I've just added faded film. Um, well, that's a lot, but just to show you what it does, you know, it just brings those shadows up. Um, so I've just done 22. And that's pretty well the whole grade I did, you know. It was a lot of trial and error just testing out different LUTs that brought the skin tones to what I liked. But Fuji 40 up, down below. Um, and the key to the dynamic range is super simple to see. You can even see it in the frame itself, right here. This is a light. I've lit the inside to match the outside as best as I could with what equipment I had. And it wasn't a super big budget, you know, they didn't have big HMI jokers or anything like that. Here is the set photo for you guys. So I took this on my iPhone. Um, right here is the front light, which you can see in the window. And here is another side light, which just kind of helped bring her up to match the outside. Um, and then here's the GH4 on a slider. So yeah. Super simple, to get the, the best out of the dynamic range, you just match the inside to the outside as best as you could. Um, and then yeah, the obviously overexposing a little bit in colour does help a lot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty well what I did and that's what I did for everything. So if I scrub through here, back a little bit to the start, you can see it. Um, if I go forward to this next clip, you can see it here. And because the lights aren't super massive, you know, I've lit here. So you can see that there's tons of shadow here, tons of shadow here, but the DVT logo is actually lit. And that's that backlight, so there's one behind the chair, um, and that's the, the shadow casting here and here. So it's super, input, super simple to read, and then I have another one um, coming this way, which you can see the reflection here. So that kind of just lights him up and helps him match the outside, but it's still super blown out. You can tell that it's a GH4. Um, <laughs> So, so let's push through a little bit, um, and there's a clip here I want to extend, uh, let me just find it. This right here, oh. it, this one. So I'm just going to extend this out and show you exactly what the lighting is doing. So if I let this play for the full clip, you can see she walks out of the light, and you can actually see the light right here. 
So for all of my setups, I had the lights just off frame. Um, because they're not super strong, they need to be super close. And you can see what it does. So right now, she's super shadow, like tons of shadows, sorry. Um, and if I wanted to expose her properly, the window would be even more blown out. So let's go back right to here. This is where you can see her walk in and out of the light and you can see how much it actually does. So it does a lot. And if you go frame by frame, oh yeah, if you go frame by frame, you can see how much it does. And then also to break down the clips even further, you can even look into eyelights, or into the eyes. Right here, Marcus in his eyes, you can see a little reflection of a light right here. And I've done that for every clip, just matching them to the inside. Cool. And outside clips, it's just natural light. I haven't got any reflectors or any lights outside. Um, and then going through more BTS, this shot is this shot right here. And I've got one light behind her, one in front. Pretty well all day is just sandwich lighting, one at the back to help separate them from the background, and then one in the front to bring them up to expose to the outside. Um, let's keep looking through. Let's have a look at some of these other set photos. So this one, sandwich lighting again, one in front, one behind. Here's me with the GH4 on the glide cam. So you can see it is GH4. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, speed ramping. So during the editing phase, I did speed ramp uh, quite a bit, and it's super simple. A lot of people have asked how I did it, and I'm going to show you that right now. So on this clip, we'll just show you. First things first, you want to extend this out by just scrolling up and down on the, the track. And then you can have, so right now this is set to opacity. So you can make it darker or brighter. So if you have overlaying tracks, you can do that. But what you want to do is right click on effects and you want to set it to speed remapping. So now the line in the middle is 100%. So normal speed, anything above is quicker and anything below is slower. So now you can come into time remap and you can set keyframes. So what I do is I go to a beat of a song, which is right here, and I hit stopwatch, and then I go to where I want it to be quick again, and I would go stopwatch again, and then you can speed it up, and then ramp it with these little things right here. So now it speeds up. Very hard to tell on that clip, but that is how you do it. Another thing I want to tell you guys is how I shoot on the day. I try and shoot everything in sequences, so having three shots per kind of setup to cut together. So as you can see with this one, with Marcus in the morning, um, it's a wide of him kind of walking, looking at some records and then putting one on. So I've got a wide of the, sh the whole shot, and then I'm coming here, I've got close-ups of his hands, cutting back to the wide. Um, and then one from behind, and then one of putting the records on, so that's actually four shots. But that's what I've done. Oh, and then I've got like the POV of the actual record. But that's kind of how I shoot on the day, to shoot everything in sequences. Um, but yeah, that's pretty well what I wanted to tell you guys. Peace out, guys. If you have any other tutorial requests, let me know, and I will be able to cover them. Thanks, guys.